My first installation in St James's Piccadilly was in 2015 and it was called Flight. Flight was a boat that I salvaged from the island of Lesbos that took 62 refugees over, all of whom would have drowned. And at the time I felt the real urgent crisis that needed to be addressed was that of the journey across the Mediterranean where thousands of people have died, as we all know. You can't just put a boat up one year and then kind of pretend that that was the story. So I contacted Arabella and I just said, look, you know, do you want to try and see if we can, we can say something about the situation now, about the refugee crisis? Because it's still really live, it's happening. Although people are still coming across in those dinghies, the weight of the story or the center of gravity of the story is now that there are thousands of people who are simply stuck, unable to go home, unable to move on, and their lives are being wasted. When I was in Lesbos in 2015, one of the things that struck me was that people were coming in from the boats and they were soaking wet. And one of the things I saw happening was that they would take off their wet clothes and they would leave them along the beaches and they would be given by volunteers dry clothes. I found the potency and the pathos and poignancy in these empty, discarded clothes a very, very powerful concept. So Starfish Foundation gathered these clothes. They very kindly then assisted in dry cleaning them and packing up the boxes. And I have brought them over to London to hang above the nave in St. James's Church, Piccadilly. Oh, there are a lot of clothes. I mean, each one of these, this was a real person. Syrian, Afghan, Iraqi. You don't know, but there's one thing for sure, they've suffered a great deal. It's as if they are stuck in purgatory. They can't move forward, they can't go back. To me, the word suspended is an arresting of movement. I mean, look at that. Sense of despair, just the life falling. Everything's got to be working on a diagonal. So it can be, if the center's here, exploding that way, that way, that, that way, so I just need this diagonal emphasis through the clothes. And what I'd love is for you to find the longest lateral length with which to create that dramatic effect, basically. Okay, okay. Oh, brilliant. I'm seeking to create a frozen explosion. And this refugee crisis is an explosion. It's a very violent thing. And in creating the clothes, as it were, being thrown out from the center, I want to reflect that sense of, of violence in their journeys and, and what they've experienced. Well, for the children especially, I'm trying to, and young people, um, I'm trying to slightly make bigger bodies, I mean whole people, partly because this installation really is focusing on young people. I'm from Germany. For me, I feel like it's very important that we give those people a chance to, to build a new home and to make them feel safe again. This is a, a, a toddler, it's, it's a very small child, and wherever the shirt picked up the dirt, maybe he fell down or got hurt or anything. We, we don't know that, but yeah, incredibly like, moving, and I absolutely can't imagine what this child has been going through. I'm going to just do the ball I did last time. Okay. Which was, um, oh yeah, got it now. So right now, everybody is adding seven hooks to six metre wires, and also a mock to the other end, because basically tomorrow, for the overnight installation, we're hanging 280 wires to use for the hanging of the garments. It's such a joy. It's got stuck, isn't it? Just rather, yeah. 
The fantastic thing about this project is that lots of different people are involved in it. 35 different people from the congregation got involved. There are people from the art world and there are also people who work around here because they volunteer at our night shelter and our breakfast that we have every week for asylum seekers and refugees. We are one day out and thanks to all the amazing volunteers. Um, Indeed. We're pretty much on track in as far as what we can do. When it comes to the hanging, there are so many unknown variables which we'll have to face on the night. So we have got the access to the church from 2 o'clock tomorrow and we've got to take everything down that's in this room um, while the installation team are going to be putting up the frame. It's quite a big and ambitious thing, but where there's a will, there's a way, and we will do it, won't we? We will. We will. For sure. I can move down a bit. Okay. How many is that that's it? Okay, that's it. Is, that, is it too many or is it? Is that, it's fine. Is that yep, too easily. Without <laughs> injuring anybody. Somebody disappeared temporarily. I don't know if you guys are able to spread out anymore, but it's great teamwork. <laughs> Partly in order to express the scale of the crisis, this has to be a significant presence in the church. So there, have, there has to be, you know, not just a few clothes, but a lot of clothes. So that's going to involve a really big scaffolding rig with guys coming in. It's going to take 30 hours or so. We'll do it overnight. Almost a day and a half of continuous work. Right, so what we're ostensibly trying to do, and I've got this snowflake, okay. <laughs> which is a very good representation of what I'm trying to okay. achieve. All the clothes are going to be pointing in to the yeah. centre or falling away from it. So I'm trying to create this emphasis whereby you've got movement up or movement down. Okay. And we're going to arrange the clothes accordingly. Okay? Cool. Let's get to it. Let's go. Churches aren't art galleries. We're not there to show art. Our chief purpose is to build people into communities of faith, to, to deepen our relationships with each other and with God. It's almost I want one to be ripped. It's like almost being pulled away from that they can be falling and she's, and she's being pulled down by her, by not letting go of her child. So art is, is in a very evocative way of, of raising questions, I guess, and, and of addressing really big themes and big issues that are sometimes difficult to address with words. So what we're doing with this installation is absolutely consonant with the church's mission in the world, which is to deepen our empathy for one another. What I need is we need to do something with that so that I can attach that yeah. to these boards. What we can do is maybe do it like this, yeah? do it this way. Handling the issues of people that have been in crisis, I feel ashamed in a sense that I personally haven't done more, um, that I haven't been more aware. Uh, when you actually see these pieces of clothing and the shoes themselves, it, it really does bring it home and it's uncanny because you start to imagine who each person was. Um, you know, pick up a small shoe like a child, you're thinking, of, was this child, you know, going to a birthday party or something? And then you pick up um, some, you know, very smart boots or smartish boots. And you think, my goodness, maybe that was for someone's wedding and they must have just like got soaking wet on the journey over and they just throw them away. And, and also, of course, some of these, it will be people who've drowned. And then the clothes were washed up on the beaches and it's chilling. It's shocking, it's surreal, and I'm hoping that the installation, and I know it will, is going to bring the reality home to a lot of people, which I hope very much will improve the plight 
of everyone who is escaping terror and war and misery. So this one? That I've hung, uh, yeah, so I've hung this um, because it's got an especially powerful symbol. Yeah, sure. There's no way you'd ever be wearing that in the regions from where they're traveling if you weren't a Christian. Right. And so it speaks volumes. So it's not an accessory like it no, is in the West? No, it's not a fashion accessory, but it speaks volumes about the persecution of minority groups, especially mm -hmm. Christians mm -hmm. um, across the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And I want to make that really quite prominent. It's very powerful, it's very powerful. I have a wire in my hand which has seven hooks at the bottom and I'm carefully pushing these hooks up the wire at one metre to two metre intervals because that's what I've been asked to do. This is the kind of big putting it all together stage and the scaffolding's all been put together so now the, um, the, like the wires and the hooks are all being separated so that the clothes can be, they're going to be put so that they're either sort of flying up or falling down. So at this stage it's, it's getting the hooks on the wires separated, it's putting clothing on to see what it looks like so I think that's why the, whatever you call that thing, goes up and down just to see what it looks like. I really love art. I really love what Arabella's doing. And I currently have two friends who are actually on Lesbos, where all these clothes come from. And then I got an email from my friends in Lesbos just telling me what they're doing and they work with children and that one of the camps has 6,800 people in it when it's built for 500. And, and I thought, I just want to be here to do this, to make, to create awareness, to really try and see if we can do something to change the attitude of this country towards taking children in people's attitude to refugees and not to close our doors and our borders. I just think if I can do a few hours and be here and help to make that difference, then that's why I'm here. If you could try and keep the wires as, as vertical as possible, so not pulling, because we've got a lot of wires, so try not to pull them across the space too much. If they are pulling across the space, just leave them dangling for the time being. Christmas is, uh, I mean, at its heart, it's a Christian festival, but it's also a huge cultural event in the UK and, I guess, in the West. And people always complain that it's got too commercial and it's too secular and, and you know, they're, they're right, they're probably right. I, I feel that this is a way to make a connection with people who are not celebrating Christmas as a Christian festival, but saying that because we're Christians, we want to raise this issue at Christmas. Because for Christians, Christmas is the moment where this miracle happens, where God becomes inextricably caught up in the life of people and becomes human. So it's, it's, an, it's a very extraordinary thing to try to explain to people. And so we're able to say, you see this story that you're seeing on the news played out in front of you in Europe, that's Christmas, that is the Christmas story. And that's really powerful as an interpretation of the gospel story that we all know and are familiar with. So I think we can space them out a little bit and then make them all kind of fly across wire rather than hanging down. They're all hanging down a lot at the moment. Can you all see those two sporting tops, for example, the 57 and the red one, yeah. how they're coming in? We can see underneath them. Yeah. That's what I want, rather than things hanging. The clothes can fill the space much more if we spread them out and make them fly through the space flat rather than hanging.
I don't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> I don't know what month it is. Apparently there's Christmas songs on, which reminds me that this is a Christmas installation. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't tell you whether it was Sunday or Monday or Wednesday right now. It's very strong. It's very strong. I think the thing, the thing that kind of strikes me immediately is I can just see, I can recognise some of the clothes. You know, it's a, big, it's a big thing to think that every single one of them belong to a person. And I, I don't know what their story is. But they're here with us now and we're kind of connected to them. We're kind of, I feel like we're going to be with them a long time. And we'll get to know them even more. But that, that's what strikes me now, that they're already uh, kind of evocative. They're already evocative of, of the people. So I'm kind of, I really hope they're OK and I don't know if they're OK. So it makes me feel something, makes me, makes me connect with them. And I think what we want from this installation is that somehow it will it will kind of break us open, you know, and keep on breaking us open so that we stay open to this uh, situation and to this experience that's happening right now. How do you feel? Very relived. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We've done it on schedule, haven't we? We've done it on schedule, I can't believe it. I'm not sure staying up all night is better. <laughs> There's no, no other way there was a real there was no other way. No. It was a real testament to teamwork and amazing, yeah. amazing help. Yeah, I agree. That's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. You should sleep a bit more tonight. Yeah. This is one of the, the prime times of year when we, we start to be altruistic about life and think about others. I think you can see from this installation, which must have taken hours to do, the great depth of um, Arabella's passion, not only for art, but for the subject of, of need, of homelessness, of poverty. Uh, here we are dealing with our first world problems and there are lots of people who don't have the luxury of having a first world problem um, and they need our help. I think one of the problems with the refugee crisis is it was such big numbers that it was easy to kind of forget that these were real people with each of them with stories. So, you know, seeing the clothes, particularly the children's clothes and the, the little shoes and thinking about the fact, you know, each of these belonged to somebody who had to flee their home. I don't think anybody becomes a refugee out of choice. Leaving everything that you ever worked for, your friends, your family, is a really difficult thing to do. You don't do it unless you really have to. I think of the courage that carries a refugee forward and the hope that sustains them on their journey. I've constructed this installation around a central orb. The light at the centre is reflective of that light of hope that a refugee carries with them. It also asks us to question the light within ourselves that will validate that hope. And as it darkens into darkness, especially at night, it reminds us of the darkness in which we will leave refugees if we ignore them. For those of us who are part of the congregation at St James's, this installation has a different kind of impact, it seems to me, from that of a visitor. So if you're a visitor, you come in and you just, you're kind of very taken aback. And a lot of people feel very emotional, they feel, they, they cry, and they connect to the story immediately. For those of us who are here at St James's, we're living with the installation every day. It's only for eight weeks or so. But it is every day, every service, every prayer, every hymn, every conversation is in the presence of these clothes. So there is 
For the people who come here day by day and people who work here and the people who come to services here, I think there's, a, a, there's kind of a cost involved because they, they can't get away from this story. And you know, of course you want to say, well, who wants to get away from it because it's real? But the reality is we can switch off the TV pictures. We, we don't have to see it. If you're living with these clothes every day, there's a kind of longer term effect. And also there's an effect because we've, we're creating a memory of these clothes. So when they go, there are thousands of people who will remember that they were here and will be able to see them in their mind's eye that they were here. So the church, even though it looks empty, it's never empty of these stories ever again. And their story, although we don't know their names, they have become part of who we are here as a church. And that, again, we hope deepens our empathy for one another and deepens our sense of compassion for one another so that we, we're really fundamentally hanging on to that truth that every single person is made in God's image and is loved by God equally.